Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, so for this final project, for this final project, I was uh, thrilled to find out that we can do a presentation on a designer of our choice. There were so many great designers to choose from, such as Saul Bass, Paula Scher, Chip Kid, Ivan Chemayev, Massimo Vignelli, Brian Collins, and so on. But the one designer that I decided to do my presentation over is Michael Beirut. So this is this is Michael Beirut right here. I chose him because he is one of the few designers that truly inspires me to become better, but also actually helps me to become better as well. His book, How to Use Graphic Design to Sell Things, Explain Things, Make Things Look Better, Make People Laugh, Make People Cry, and Every Once in a While, Change the World, I know it's a mouthful, has allowed me to learn many critical lessons about the field and helped me, and helped me to develop my own identity as, as a designer. All of his work that I'll be mentioning, which is only two pieces of work, is found in this book. So Michael Beirut was born in 1957 in Cleveland, Ohio, where he first discovered his mir this miracle called graphic design. His father, while in the car, pointed out a clever logo. Since Michael Beirut was only about six at the time, he didn't understand what was so clever about it until his father explained it. The Clark Material Handling Company had its logo on one of their forklift trucks. The L in Clark was lifting up a part of the A, which subtly demonstrates the product that the company primarily sells. It was at this moment that Beirut got an indication of what he wanted to do for the rest of his life, even though he was unable to describe exactly what that was at the time. Before graduating high school, he read three books, Aim for a Job in Graphic Design and Art by S. Neil Fujita, Graphic Design Manual by Armin Hoffman, and Graphic Design by Milton Glaser. These three books set the direction of his, of his entire professional career. He attended the University of Cincinnati College of Design, Architecture, Art, and Planning, graduating summa cum laude in 1980, and then worked for none other than Massimo Vignelli at Vignelli Associates until he became a partner at Pentagram in 1990. While working at Vignelli Associates, Beirut was tasked with designing invitations for two separate events, experimental furniture, the exhibit, the sorry, the Experimental Furniture Exhibition and a lecture by NASA scientists on spacecraft interiors. There weren't any challenges until the marketing manager called and told him that the budget cuts, that the budget cut, that there were budget cuts made and he needed to combine both events into one invitation. Beirut got frustrated, obviously, and in his moment of vexation, he scribbled a quick sketch that ended up becoming the illustration for the poster. The illustration was of a table, which almost looks like an elongated grill, while a vase of flowers with a vase of flowers on top of it. When the illustration is flipped over, it appears to be a spaceship that has taken off. This illustration was combined with a red background and some text set in Bodoni, and the invitation was complete. The simplicity of the illustration reminds me of the Sachplakat style seen in Lucian Bernhardt's Priester Matches poster. The style was based on the principle that ideas are best expressed through its most necessary form, completely getting rid of all unnecessary elements. Beirut accidentally found the solution by discovering a single abstract form that can represent two completely unrelated ideas. In his book, he quotes, people don't care about the typefaces and colors. They are merely the delivery mechanism for something else, ideas. By drawing, my drawing, crude as it was, was an idea, something with the capacity to surprise engage and amuse people. It was at that moment of scribbling, I realized content is more important than form. Beirut had come to the understanding that people are interested in ideas, a single fulfilling moment of discovery, which, provide, which proves to the viewer that the design was indeed worth looking at, no matter what form it was, it was depicted in. In 2014, he was hired by the MIT Media Lab because they were wanting to change their identity system, which was designed by Richard V. in 2011. This previous identity was extremely flexible because an algorithm was created that would create 40,000 permutations of one logo. The permutations were all visually consistent but meaningless in identifying the 23 individual research groups. Beirut's challenge was to create a timeless yet flexible identity, one that could effectively identify each individual research group while maintaining a consistent visual language. He accomplished just that by using a seven by seven grid square. Um, he would create a series of, of blocky monograms for each research group in combination with their full, 
name written out in Helvetica. An entire typeface was also designed using that same grid. Given the heavy constraints, this design system is extremely plain. A black and white color palette, rectilinear forms dictated by a grid, and the use of Helvetica all work together to create an identity heavily based on the principles of the international style. The designs are also incredibly similar to the designs of uh, distilled designer Theo van Duisburg. Theo van Duisburg designed a typeface in 1917 that used a 25 or yeah, 25 square grid or a five by five square grid, very similar to the typeface um, created by the M created for MIT Media Lab. In my opinion, Beirut nailed this project, even though designs might not elicit an emotional response from the viewer at first, it still functions at the highest possible level, solving all visual problems that the Media Lab had before and giving them an identity that speaks to their professionality, forward-looking mentality, and strong sense of mission. The two works that I mention here are too few to describe, the, to describe Michael Beirut's skill as a designer and a problem solver. He was working with several huge he has worked with several huge clients such as New York Times, Sex with Avenue, Yahoo, MasterCard, United Airlines, and Hillary Clinton, just to name a few. And he continually works hard to make the world more beautiful with good design and to pass down his wisdom to the next generations of designers. His work proves proves that he is not at all concerned with style, with the style he employs, but how well he can serve his clients so that they can do better. I would like to con conclude with one last quote from his book. Design can't save the world, only people can do that. But design can give us the inspiration, the tools, and the means to try. So thank you so much every, to everyone um, who watched this presentation. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that this presentation uh, gave you a better understanding of the true purpose of design. So this was my works cited page. And um, yeah, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate it.